Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We're joined by Dr. Jeff Gooden this morning. He's Senior Medical Advisor, Drug Monitoring and Toxicology at Quest Diagnostics. He's joining us to discuss a report that he co-authored that found that one in two patients showed signs of prescription drug misuse. He's also going to share his views on avenues out of this drug crisis and share a bit about the uh, updated CDC opioid guidance as well. A lot to cover in a short period of time. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Jeff Gooden. Nice to meet you and thank you so much for taking the time. A pleasure for being here. Thank you. Prescription drug misuse. What does that entail? I mean, are we talking just prescription drugs? Are we talking prescription drugs mixed with illicit drugs? What's going on? Yeah. So, you know, much of the focus in the last few years has been on illicit drug abuse and and the overdose deaths and the opioid crisis that we've seen in in many of our communities. But uh, many healthcare providers have forgotten that prescription drug misuse remains a problem as well. So although it is true the majority of deaths that we see in this country are due to illicit drugs, uh, there's still a a high percentage of, of adverse outcomes that occur because of prescription drug misuse. So it's important for clinicians, especially those on the front lines, and especially for those who are prescribing things like pain medicines or, or, or psychiatric medicines for mental health disorders, to be aware that prescription drug misuse is a problem. And at Quest Diagnostics, where I'm a, a consultant to the drug monitoring and toxicology franchise, we go through our data every year and uh, uh, author a report called the Health Trends Report. This is available online simply by searching the Health Trends Drug Monitoring Report. And it's amazing that year after year after year, despite patients knowing that they're going to be drug tested, half of the time their drug test comes back with a result that we don't expect. That means there's either no drug found in their system some drug that doesn't belong in their system, found in their system, or they find their drug plus some other drug in their system. So you can imagine how dangerous this is to public health. Now, this doesn't seem to be um, slowing down. It seems to be accelerating. Is, Is that correct? Yeah, well, if you look at the data that comes from the CDC, the death toll due to overdoses has only gone up in the last few years. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. And people are obviously spending, you know, their careers investigating why that is. But we think that the COVID-19 pandemic was really bad from a behavioral health, mental health, psychiatric standpoint. Uh, People had time on their hands. And when you are prone to misusing medicines, time is a bad thing. Uh, People had extra money on hand. Uh, governmental dollars that that had been distributed. Uh, And we saw that there was a major uptick in drug abuse in our communities. As a matter of fact, at Quest Diagnostics, we think we were one of the first to literally have our finger on the pulse, kind of a a surveillance mechanism uh, that within weeks after the start of the pandemic, we noticed a spike in positivity of things like heroin and fentanyl and methamphetamine simply from the samples that were being sent in from doctor's offices. Uh, So, you know, again, very complex, multifactorial, but we think there were were many different reasons related to the pandemic that caused this tick up in drug misuse. Well, the pandemic, of course, was no respecter of persons. Is this misuse a risk for anyone, no matter the age, no matter the the sex or, or the race? Oh, yeah. Uh, Substance abuse disorders don't discriminate. Uh, This is not a class or a race phenomenon. This uh, substance misuse is partially genetic. Uh, We think there's some environmental factors to it as well. Uh, It's very prevalent in people with mental health disorders, unfortunately, those with bipolar disorder and, and, and other psychiatric conditions. Uh, we call them the dual diagnoses where they have uh, both mental health issues and substance misuse issues. Uh, 
so it uh, you know it is a a concerning phenomenon, and when we poll the doctors on the front line, so we've done this a couple of times. We 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 commissioned the Harris poll to do a survey of five hundred primary care physicians who prescribe pain medicines and other controlled substances, and they are all fearful. Like eighty or ninety percent said that they think that the pandemic. Uh, has certainly made the drug crisis worse, and they think that drug monitoring, like sending samples for drug testing, is critical for being able to monitor your patients to know whether they're misusing any type of controlled or illicit substances. When we hear about drug misuse or overdoses, we automatically go toward the the opioid side, the the illicit uh, fentanyl side. You mentioned people that are on uh, drugs for for mental health uh, reasons with, say, with with Adderall. Yeah. So, you know, much to my surprise, we even see that when, when samples are sent in, in the younger adolescent population for let's say those kids on Adderall for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, that up to half of those samples come back with some aberrancy as well. In other words, they're either not taking their drug or they have other drugs in their system. So uh, this is a big problem for all prescription medicines, but the one that gets the most press are opioids because it's the one that causes death. If someone simply takes a, you know, a Valium-like medicine with nothing else in their system, um, you don't usually see death. It would, it, Valium works the same way, let's say, alcohol does in the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. The trouble with opioids are that they depress your respirations to the point where you can stop breathing, and that's why we see this crisis of drug-related overdose. The the vast majority of overdose deaths are related to, to opioids, of which the vast majority are related to illicit street drugs like, like fentanyl. But as I mentioned before, prescription drug misuse remains a big problem. And the way that we can screen for that is with drug testing. Look, we can't get out and test every student as great an idea as that would be for early detection or every employee. But we can certainly test patients. And one of the standing guidelines for treating patients with pain medicines, with controlled substances, every state has medical guidelines. And every single one of them includes the use of prescription drug monitoring programs and drug testing protocols so that doctors can literally test the compliance of their patients to make sure that they're taking the medicines that they were supposed to and that they're not taking the medicines that they're not supposed to. Talk briefly about the CDC's new opioid prescribing guidelines. Of course. So about six or seven years ago, the CDC came out with its first uh, guideline on, on opioid prescribing, and it was met with a lot of controversy. So they went back to the drawing board and just a few months ago in late 2022 released an update to the CDC opioid prescribing guidelines. And what they said was that clinicians should consider drug testing, toxicology testing, before starting any type of opioid for a pain management patient, and then periodically, at least annually, during the therapy, especially when there's a risk of overdose due to drug mixing or alcohol consumption or other high-risk factors. And the other thing CDC said, different than the last time, is, look, if you're going to test one patient, you need to test all patients. That clinicians and health systems should aim to minimize the bias in testing. And you can't apply drug testing differentially on the basis of stereotypes or, you know, what you assume patients might be doing. I can tell you from 25 years or longer in this space, you cannot look at a patient and tell if they are misusing their medications. The only objective tool we have as doctors to know how patients are taking their medicines is to use drug testing. So we do that for all of our patients, despite any racial or ethnic or you know male-female characteristics that, that we might think have a bias in medicine. Well, doctor, if you would, give us a website where our listeners can learn more about Quest Diagnostics and these uh, guidelines as well. You know, if you simply go to questdiagnostics.com, 
You could find and, and search for highlights on any number of topics in medicine, including um, our health trends report. It may be easier if you search Quest Diagnostics health trends for prescription drugs or uh, drug monitoring. Uh, it would take you closer to the page. And um, uh, I believe there's also a, uh, a website, questdrugmonitoring.com, that your listeners can go to for resources, especially if they're healthcare providers, uh, resources about clinical drug monitoring. Jeff, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for lending us some of your time this morning on Health Professional Radio. Have a great day. Thanks so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Jeff Gooden. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. Thank you.